Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Laura Buckwell and on behalf of CPI Media Group, I'd like to welcome you all to the Tahawaltech.com Transformational Leadership Awards for 2020. Well, COVID-19 has disrupted every aspect of our lives, but thanks to the outstanding leadership of the UA government in managing this global health crisis, we're beginning to see things reopen, such as hotels, restaurants and offices. Unfortunately, it's still a little bit too early to start gathering in large numbers again, so in order to adhere to the measures and precautions still in place regarding social distancing, these awards, as you can see, are being held virtually. In addition to the role of government, the, U, the IT industry has shown phenomenal leadership during this pandemic and their innovative thinking has allowed us to remain connected during the lockdown and our world post COVID-19 will be shaped by these inspirational and transformational leaders. First and foremost, we would like to say a huge thank you to our gold sponsors, Huawei and Fortinet for making these awards happen. Well, to tell us a little bit more about the role the IT industry has played over the last four months, let me now introduce you to the editor of Computer News Middle East, Mr. Mark Falker. It has been an extremely difficult time for us all over the last number of months as we all attempt to adjust to what has been described as the new normal. However, across the IT industry, we've seen enterprises come together as an ecosystem of partners in order to help each other through what really has been an unprecedented situation. COVID-19 has forced us all to go in a different direction than we had previously planned, but we've adapted, learned new skills and forged stronger relationships as a result. Today we're going to celebrate the IT leaders that have shown remarkable leadership during this pandemic and who have ultimately allowed us to maintain business continuity. Our dependence on technology to remain connected has never been so evident amidst the global health crisis and technology is going to continue to shape how we work, when we work and where we work in the future. As Laura already mentioned in her opening speech, the UE government has shown tremendous leadership to keep this virus under control, but they have been supplemented by the IT community that has helped them keep the lights on. Those that we honour here today have helped the Middle East region fight back and will ultimately reshape the IT industry post-COVID-19. There has been great solidarity across the industry and one message that has become abundantly clear during all this uncertainty and difficulty is that together we are stronger. I'd now like to hand you back over to Laura to commence the awards. Well, thank you very much to Mark Falker there. Well, Fortinet is a global leader in delivering network security solutions that equips businesses with the ability to be protected from sophisticated threats. We're now going to hear from Osama Bakor, the senior systems engineer at Fortinet. Hi, good day, everyone. I hope all of you are safe and doing well. Uh, my name is Osama Bashur. I'm a senior systems engineer at Fortinet Middle East. I thought I could use this opportunity to uh, share with you our experience during the past few months with some aspects and challenges of uh, due to the current COVID-19 situation. And also touch base on Fortinet contribution uh, to our customers, partners and society when it comes to uh, dealing and overcoming these challenges. I think it is evident now uh, that the current reality has forced many organizations to face rapid changes and a mounting risk for which they, uh, they required and needed to quickly and urgently adopt new processes and technologies to maintain their business continuity. In fact, we at Fortinet we have a positive perspective uh, about this adoption as we consider it one of the most significant driving factors for digital transformation. However, this rapid transformation has brought with it additional risks. These risks emerged from the new dynamic that COVID-19 imposed with uh, especially with uh, a broad transition to remote workforce model, a model where the enterprise edge grew exponentially, and that itself has led to wider and uh, bigger attack surface due to the change of access boundaries to be the internet uh, instead of a local area network, 
and the fact that the valuable digital assets are now exposed to the public network versus the previous situation where they were kept in secure vaults and under strict and limited access. Another aspect, and it's actually interesting aspects of this transformation is the overwhelming need for tools to track and analyze user behaviors while they are away, their productivity and efficiency by collecting and analyzing big amount of data in real time. Being leader in cybersecurity, it has always been the bread and butter of Fortinet solutions to look deeper within data repository and wider around the data exchanges to find anomalies and malicious activities. Therefore, we were best positioned to use these core functionality, not only to protect uh, our customers, but also help them improve their workforce product productivity by providing meaningful insights about what's going on within their applications within their uh, data centers and uh, around their, the communication that is happening between uh, among their workforces. That being said, we at Fortinet had to cope also with these requirements. And the company had uh, introduced since the beginning of the uh, crisis, a new work model, additional product offering, and most importantly, additional tools to address the skill the skill, soft, uh, the, the, uh, skill set shortage. So in terms of work model, we have doubled uh, the effort to support our customers and partners in their transition. That is that this was done by adopting new collaboration tool, by uh, increasing customer engagement, such as proof of concepts, demo, as well as pilot implementation and by enhancing uh, our work method and cross-functional responsibilities, including collaboration by other OEMs, vendor, and in many occasions with other competitors as well. Fortinet has also facilitated the quick and automated uh, deployment of technology and technological solution to help our customer. Uh, and, and these technologies were essential uh, for the remote, remote workforce model. So aside making our uh, complete secure access uh, uh, VPN solution free for our customers, uh, we uh, introduced essential changes to the licensing model to cope with these uh, new emerging uh, uh, requirements. And we also leveraged the use of virtualized uh, platforms that uh, we had uh, been using for the past as well uh, for quicker deployment and zero touch uh, provisioning in addition to the continuous focus on our multi-cloud uh, solution being widely accessible in many regions and cross geographies. Finally, and most importantly, because the IT team is under immense pressure to effectively secure their organization uh, in such dynamic environment, which require a broad security skill sets, we have made our entire catalog of official training courses available for free so that any IT professional can expand his or her knowledge quickly and efficiently within his organization. This offering is valid throughout this year and it includes the entire NSE catalog. NSE stands for the uh, Network Security Expert Program starting from the most basic NSE1 level till the very advanced industry attested NSE8 uh, certification. Finally, uh, there is no doubt that our generation is going through challenging time where individual and collective efforts are needed from everybody. And I hope uh, these few minutes have been of an added value for you and I invite you to connect with us for more information. Thanks for watching and stay safe. Thank you. 
Well, Huawei are one of the world's leading ICT vendors, and we're now going to hear from Space Lee, the Vice President of Public Affairs and Communications at Huawei Middle East. Well, good morning, honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen. A good day to you all. Despite the unprecedented challenges we are facing, the governments across the global have spared no effort to maintain social stability, protecting people's livelihoods, and helping the entire society fighting against COVID-19. At present, the global situation is changing, and there are many uncertainties. However, 2020 has taught us that the connectivity has never been so important not only to improve lives by creating easy access, but help save them. To all industries and economic stakeholders, it's quite clear that intelligent, inclusive connectivity is fundamental, necessary, and a key cornerstone for society. It's simply a basic need. ICT industry has been playing an increasingly important role in controlling the virus, continue business, and certainly restoring economic. Many industries have fast tracked their digital transformation journey in order to minimize disruption as much as possible. Government too have recognized the value of technology innovation in recovering from the current pandemic. As the central stage of SET is 5G development. 5G has expanding the boundaries of many other adjacent technology and solutions such as artificial intelligence, big data, cloud, edge computing. This has driven great value for both consumers and enterprises. Leveraging 5G for good society, industry, and economic is great news. 5G simply brings agility, productivity, security, and intelligence to all industry. Today, the Middle East is among the world front runners in embracing 5G to digital transform vertical industry, enhancing productivity and open new opportunities. Looking ahead, Huawei has responsibility and confidence to work with operators, partners, and vertical industry to achieve 5G business ecosystem to help enterprises to improving their competitivity. In the past two years, we have established in deep cooperation with more than 160 economic uh, ecosystem partners from the world and the region, meeting the future social economic demands will require new form of public private partnership based on open collaboration, supporting strong industry policy that will enable social value, economic development, and provide enhanced service experience to consumers across the region. We all need to work together to humanize technology, innovation collaboration, and the business model to expand ecosystem, and more important, never be distracted away from that goal. Let's bring digital to every person, home, and organization for a fully connected, intelligent world. This is also Huawei vision. We invite all the organizations to be a part of the journey and the common those here today who have made outstanding achievements in digital transformation. Building network infrastructure and applications alone is not enough to achieve digital inclusion, bring the huge digital divide between different regions and countries is equally important. To truly address this issue, we work with governments, local, country, lo local communities, and other industries to improve the digital skill of individuals and the society as a whole, and help SME enhance digital capabilities. By doing this, we contribute to develop of local communities and countries and makes their digital economic more competitive. By leveraging our collective strengths and recognizing 
the lessons learned from recent time, I'm confident that SAP industry will bloom in all industries and SAP really become part of livelihood. Finally, let's work together towards a beautiful future. Thank you. Well, a huge thank you to Huawei there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to announce some of our winners. The first set of awards are the Editor's Choice Vendor Awards. Well, artificial intelligence is transforming industries on a global scale, and that trend is set to grow exponentially as we enter into an era called the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Well, the winner of our first award is a world-leading provider of security products and solutions. And it's industry-leading smart cameras and infrastructure solutions that engineered with AI are enabling smarter decision-making from people counting and facial recognition to vehicle recognition and automated security alerts. The winner of the AI Innovation Vendor of the Year Award is Hike Vision. A huge congratulations once again there to Hike Vision. We move on to our next award. Well, the diverse expertise of our next company includes banking, cybersecurity, automation, artificial intelligence, ERP, mobility, and IT staffing solutions. Their innovative suite of products and services, especially in the vertical of automation, is the reason why they've been selected as the winner of this next award. Best automation solutions provider is Rack me out. Well done once again there to Rack me out. Well, during COVID-19, a major challenge for enterprises globally, regardless of the industry, has been security. Well, our next winner is a worldwide leader in next generation cybersecurity. It protects 400,000 organizations of all sizes in more than 150 countries from today's most advanced cyber threats. The winner of the best of all cybersecurity vendor is Sophos. One other major obstacle that has faced businesses transitioning from the compounds of their traditional office environment to a virtual one is remote access. Our winner has developed a pioneering remote work solutions portfolio that enables SMBs and large enterprises across retail, education and hospitality to deploy professional grade networks from anywhere and any time. Best Remote Connectivity Solutions goes to D-Link. Many congratulations once again there to D-Link. Well, the move towards public cloud has been accelerated during COVID-19 and more and more enterprises recognize the incredible benefits that embracing cloud technology can provide for their organization. Well, the winner for our next award has displayed ingenuity and vision to become a leading solutions provider in this space. Cloud Solutions Provider of the Year goes to Rackspace. Well, we really have seen some fantastic displays of corporate social responsibility across the IT ecosystem during the COVID-19 situation. But the winner of our next award really has shown remarkable leadership in this space. This company activated a global 24-7 COVID-19 help desk to respond to customer questions about their current solution stack or if they needed consultation on how best to convert agents to remote work access. As a result of all of this, our winner enabled 2 million remote workers from over 11,000 companies around the world to continue working safely during the pandemic. The CSR leader of the year is, it's Avaya.
Well, a huge congratulations once again there to Avaya. Well, we also briefly touched on the importance of being cyber resilient, especially as many businesses were vulnerable as a result of the COVID-19 crisis. Well, our next winner has firmly established itself as a real leader in cybersecurity. The Cyber Security Vendor of the Year for 2020 is Fortinet. Well done once again there to Fortinet. Well, we've also seen an exponential increase in digital transformation projects here in the Middle East since the lockdown started back in March. Well, this next company is a global leader in terms of the solutions it provides to keep us connected, but also in terms of how it has leveraged its expertise to help businesses embark upon their digital transformation journeys. The Digital Transformation Partner of the Year for 2020, it's Huawei. Well, this next company has carved out a reputation for their innovation in the space of home security and has created some fabulous security projects. The winner of the Innovative Home Security Technology of the Year Award is Eufy Security. Well, the winner of our next award is a technology company that specializes in meeting experience solutions, digital projection and imaging technology, focusing on three core markets, entertainment, enterprise and healthcare. This company is leading the way in terms of delivering a hybrid meeting experience where people from remote locations can seamlessly collaborate with the meeting room workforce. The winner of the innovative meeting experience of the year goes to, it goes to Barco. Well, we've already highlighted the impact this company has had not only in the Middle East, but on a global scale. It truly is one of the world's most innovative companies. The innovative vendor of the year for 2020 goes to Huawei. Congratulations once again to Huawei there. Well, in terms of cloud experience, companies are looking for the best of both worlds in terms of public and private cloud. Well, our next winner has, a, has designed a suite of cloud solutions designed to empower the user and give them control. The winner of the leader in hybrid multi-cloud experience is NetApp. Very well done indeed to NetApp there. Well, we've already talked about digital transformation, but there has also been a lot of security transformation of late. And this next organization has really shown leadership and innovation in this vertical. Security Transformation Leader of the Year for 2020 is MicroFocus. <music> Well, service software has become more important than ever with the trend of growing customer expectations and increased competition. The winner of our next award has been listed as a leader in the field of service management in the Gartner Magic Quadrant. The service management leader of the year for 2020 is IFS. And our last, but certainly not least, Editor's Choice Vendor Award is again focused on the critical topic of cybersecurity, where this company has really carved out a reputation for spearheading a whole range of new solutions. The next gen cybersecurity vendor of the year is Cyber Reason. Well, a very well done indeed to all of our Editor's Choice Vendor Award winners. A huge congratulations. Well, before we head to our Transformational Leader Awards, it's time for us to quickly hear from our gold sponsor, Fortinet. The Fortinet Security Fabric, enabling digital innovation with the broadest end-to-end -end cybersecurity platform. 
It all starts with network security and the number one next generation firewall and secure SD-WAN solutions in the world. Secure and accelerate the network and user experience. Secure Wi-Fi and switching access. Extend security to the access layer. Network access. Know and control who and what is on the network. Fabric Management Center. Centralize management and automate workflows with a single console. Open Fabric Ecosystem. Seamless partner integrations for end-to-end -end interoperability. Cloud infrastructure. Protect and control the entire infrastructure across multi-cloud environments. Applications. Protect business critical applications from web to mail and prevent advanced threats. Security operations. Automatically prevent, detect, and respond to cyber threats. Endpoint. Protect users and devices on and off the network. The Fortinet Security Fabric. Broad, integrated, automated. From the number one cybersecurity company in the world. Thank you very much once again to our gold sponsor, Fortinet there. Well, we're now going to award the efforts of exceptional technology thought leaders who have leveraged their expertise and knowledge to equip businesses with the tools to cope and reshape the world post COVID-19. It's time now for our transformational leader awards. Our first five winners for 2020 are Aklam Al Sahid, KFMC. Ahmed Salman, the Telecommunications Regulatory Authority. Ali Asghar Buhari from Zuleka Hospital. Dr. Amani Al Jazmi, Dubai Health Authority. And Andre Weiss from the Emirates Group IT. And there you have our first five transformational leaders for 2020. We move on now to our next set of winners who are Anindo Banjari from Meras Holding, Anshul Shurastav from Emirates Post, Aral Jose Vigin, DIFC Courts, and Don Sorau from the Agen Group Holdings. And we move on now, of course, to our next five winners of the Transformational Leader Awards. And our first winner is Ellis Wang from Mashrek Bank. Eric Dudman Nielsen from Virgin Mobile, Middle East and Africa. Faisal Ali, the Gargash Group. Ganem Kalfan Ganem Al Mahebi from the Statistics Center, Abu Dhabi. And Her Excellency Noor Al Noman from the Department of E Government, Sharjah. Well done once again to our first lot of winners there. We're now going to take a short break from our awards to take a look at a panel discussion which was actually moderated last week by CNME editor Mark Falker. Mark is joined by some of the region's leading IT decision makers to discuss the economic impact COVID-19 has had, the opportunities presented by the crisis and what the future will look like post COVID-19. Okay, good afternoon and welcome to our panel discussion, which aims to explore uh, some of the challenges and opportunities that have been presented and, and born out of the COVID-19 situation. Uh, my name is Mark Barker. I'm the editor of Computer News Middle East, and I'll be the moderator for today's session. Today's panel consists of some of the region's key uh, IT decision makers and thought leaders, and it's a pleasure for me to be afforded the opportunity to, to chair this discussion. Before we begin today's session, please uh, let me introduce you to our panelists. We've got Safter Nazir, Regional Vice President, Digital Industry Strategy at Huawei. We've got Savio Tovar Diaz, Senior Director, Sales Engineering at Avaya International. Osama Bashur, Senior Systems Engineer, Fortinet. Anas A. Abdulhai, Director and Deputy CEO of Proven Consult. Samir Efhani, Sales Director, Middle East at Avanti. 
James Harvey, James Harvey, sorry, EMEA CTO at Cisco App Dynamic, and Rajesh Ganesan, Vice President at Manage Engine. Apologies if I've got the pronunciation of any of those names wrong. Um, so I'm just going to kick start. Safter, I'm going to I'm going to come to you first. It's been a long time since uh, I spoke to you actually. Uh, I used to speak to you a lot when I worked with Telecom Review. But obviously, uh, Huawei doesn't need any introduction uh, to the panelists or our viewers. Uh, one of the global leaders in terms of ICT solutions. How have you guys leveraged your expertise in order to help uh, your customers and your clients cope with the challenges they've faced uh, during COVID-19? Sure, so thanks for that and good to talk to you again. Welcome all to uh, the other panelists. Um, so I think from an industry perspective, we're all quite fortunate, I would guess, that uh, technology and healthcare are probably the two least impacted uh, sectors due to the COVID-19. But COVID-19, if we look at it this way, um, we all know about big data. And if I use the same analogy about the three Vs, the volume, uh, variety, and the velocity of impact for COVID-19 is really quite unprecedented, in, at least in living memory and probably in, in uh, recent history as well. Uh, so it's shook uh, our foundations, at least for each country has had to deal with it. But what we found is that uh, countries that were more digitally ready have been able to ride that wave uh, with less impact. And a good example for that is the UE. The, the UE, within a couple of weeks, had everybody on online education. Uh, yes, there was enough headroom in network capacity and uh, subsea capacity to allow that additional bandwidth. So there's been a shift in, in, consume, in, in user behavior for probably less mobile broadband consumption and more home broadband. I, I know one of the first things I did uh, early this year was upgrade my own uh, home broadband connection as well to make sure that we could have uh, multiple video conferences going on at the same time. Uh, so there's that readiness part of it. So the people who were more digitally ready, able to ride it uh, uh, with less impact and pain. But what it has done is for people who were not in a process of digital transformation, it's really accelerated that. It's brought it to the fore. It's brought things that we might have thought um, could take a long time have just happened overnight, including laws. For example, in some countries, working from home uh, was not accepted uh, or not even recognized in the law, perhaps. And that's had to change. So many things have, uh, have uh, had to change from a legal perspective, from a regulatory perspective. We've had things like the UE uh, TRA set minimum uh, broadband speeds to be able to cope with all of this. So th there's the, that readiness part of it, but then what do people do about it now? Um, we certainly see that ICT industry is going to be the driver for getting the economy going again. And there's some good examples of that. Not only what, uh, what uh, China has been doing, because it was a, probably the first impacted, uh, but also if you look at somewhere like South Korea. South Korea has a very strong plan of uh, ICT enablement to recover the economy. And they, uh, they give it a, a particular name, uh, actually. They call it DNA uh, program, which is about digital and network expansion. So they're expanding. Even though they were one of the first in 5G, they're putting an extra 50% uh, uh, funding or acceleration into 5G expansion. We also see that in this region. So people like uh, Zane KSA, CEO made an announcement last week, I believe it was, um, about 5G expansion. They're gonna cover the whole of Saudi Arabia with, uh, with 5G. We see that also in Kuwait itself. Uh, the regulator there, Citra, has uh, last week put out a 5G speed test benchmark, which has put pressure, of course, on all of the operators to be able to uh, increase their capacity and service levels. So we're actually seeing that uh, uh, 5G expansion will continue. Technology will be the uh, industry sector to help recover, uh, get the economies out of the, the stumbling block that they're in. And we're gonna see a lot more of what we might know as the distance economy. In fact, in South Korea, it's known as a untact, which is a term created by some social engineers, but basically means the distance economy is gonna become more important. Um, there's a massive use of QR codes in certain countries as well. So technology is, is going to have to get us out of the situation that we're in. Uh, so from an industry perspective, we're probably all in a, in a good industry to be, to be able to impact the countries that we live and work in. 
Thanks for that, Safia. That was a very comprehensive overview of, uh, of, of what Huawei have been working on and, and, and what the plans are for the future. So really appreciate that. Thanks for that, Safia. I'm going to go on to Savio now from uh, Avaya. Obviously, Avaya activated a global 24-7 COVID-19 help desk to respond to customer questions during the pandemic and enable 2 million remote workers to continue working safely, which is fantastic. But can you just tell us a little bit more about Avaya in terms of what you've been doing during COVID-19 and how you're going to continue to assist um, helping your, 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 your very large and extensive customer base? Yeah, so, you know, as a leader in the unified comms and contact center space, uh, uh, we've been working. In fact, I think, although we all moved and worked from home, I think we started to work a little bit extra um, in the initial phases of each country's, uh, you know, uh, pandem uh, pandemic and the COVID uptake uh, to, to aggressively get our customers to move uh, rapidly to the number you mentioned we managed to move 2 million contact center agents and employees to work from home and continue to provide customer service to their customers in, any, in every shape and form. Uh, to what Safra said, yes, you know, the technology industry um, is least impacted, but it's also going to morph and change in many ways. So I think uh, the first waves have been uh, to move employees and uh, call center agents home, then to secure their environments and, and get them to work from home in a secure environment because not all contact center agents have uh, large broadband capabilities or large homes where they have individual spaces. So securing the desktops is critical. Uh, the next thing is, how do you automate the extended and increased traffic that comes in for customer service, especially in the travel industry, uh, cancellations, refunds, uh, modifying your travel bookings uh, created a serious influx. So the other elements of chatbots, automation, um, and AI have started to become um, an increased awareness around that to actually drive automating some of those tasks, getting them smarter to drive some of those business transactions uh, in a far more rapid manner to reduce the traffic on human agents in general. Uh, the next was to be able to drive uh, pure cloud strategies because of the agility needed uh, to work from home. Um, and that we, we did with uh, something called Avaya Spaces. We actually saw uh, over the last three months a 2,100% increase in, in an uptake on um, voice and video from the cloud on our platforms in general as we, we took people home uh, to collaborate. So in essence, I think, you know, um, COVID, if anything, has accelerated uh, digital transformation, which is not only technology, but a mindset. Um, you know, we were always used to doing certain things a certain way, and it was very hard to move people to uh, to do it any, in any other way, in, in different ways. I think COVID has, has forced us into that new state of mind where remote collaboration, remote meetings are a way of life and has, has started to become a norm. Will we go back to normal? Yeah, some elements will go back to normal, but you know, like anyone who's had a major health issue, like a heart attack or something, you make some lifestyle changes uh, to make sure you don't uh, you're prepared for the next one or you, you don't go through another one um, in the same impact. So I think we're, we're going to see uh, lots of enterprises uh, create different policies for work from home, uh, drive education, etiquette, mindset changes, culture changes of how to collaborate, how to measure productivity um, and drive uh, better customer service in, in general uh, from digital platforms in the cloud. Thanks for that, Savio. That was brilliant. Really appreciate that. And again, similar to Safdi, a very uh, comprehensive overview of, of Avaya and the things you're doing. So I'm going to move on to Fortinet now. I'm going to speak to Osama. Obviously, Fortinet, you know, and the importance of becoming uh, cyber resilient um, has been has been hugely important because a lot of businesses were vulnerable making that transition to the compounds of their office environment to a virtual one. 
and obviously Fortnite are a real leader in terms of cyber security. So Osama, how have you assisted uh, those businesses in terms of uh, becoming more secure during the crisis? Thanks Mark for this uh, introduction and uh, hi to everybody on this call. Uh, so, uh, thanks for the uh, introduction, actually it paved the way to what I wanted to talk about. So many organi what we have realized is many organizations have been already pursuing what is called today the uh, zero uh, trust model and security driven architecture models. Now, um, in fact, uh, this is for their operation. However, the new pandemic and you, the new dynamics that the COVID-19 uh, have brought as a result of the mandates, the uh, restrictions, and most importantly, working remotely. So this have introduced a new whole set of uh, security challenges, actually. Now, this further signified and magnified the importance of the model that I have talked about. Now, these challenges are derived from the, um, what we call the expansion uh, of the enterprise edge. So the enterprise edge is actually the boundaries where access to the corporate occur. Now, the colleagues here have talked about it and touched based on it, but it is uh, a common sense that when we expand the enterprise edge, uh, the more we expand the enterprise edge, the larger the attack surface will be. So that translates actually to a, a higher risk on the enterprises and on the communication uh, that the teleworker uh, do on, to achieve their objectives. So nowadays, and with people working remotely, not only they are exposed more to the uh, cyber security attacks, but the enterprise boundary have expanded and it is now exposed to the public network, to, to, to the public internet that is traditionally not controlled, neither secured nor managed. And it, uh, leave alone that historically speaking, uh, the digital assets of the corporation was traditionally kept in a in kind of secure bolts, secure environments, and now they have to, you know, open up to the public internet and the public network. So that, you know, in from our perspective, tremendously increased the need for sophisticated and dedicated security uh, elements and and solutions. So. The, it is. It, it goes without question that things like uh, secure remote access, identity and access management solutions, endpoint detection, protection, and response and persistent uh, attacks, um, you know, uh, detection and prevention becomes of a highly valuable for the organizations. Another aspect uh, to talk about, which is quite interesting it is indirectly linked to the security challenges, but it contributes to, uh, to what we have witnessed recently is the increasing and overwhelming tools, uh, need for the tools to track and analyze users and uh, customers' behaviors. Now with the people sitting outside the boundary of or the organization, their efficiency, their productivity is under question because we have we are shifting the whole business model now most often uh, these tools use advanced technologies like machine learning and artificial intelligence to provide the uh, the decision makers with the with the with the inform the essential information to take their business decision on the on the uh, in the context of business continuity so being a, uh, uh, you know, a company that works in the security field, it was always and it will uh, uh, continue to be our bread and butter to look at the bits and pieces of the data, uh, you know, uh, uh, within the data repositories and around the uh, traffic or around the data exchanges between the party. And that for sure put us in a well position 
to help the organization not only to secure their network, but to use this deep, we call it deep look into the data and the exchange of data in order and use our tools to provide them with vital uh, analytic and data uh, that allows them to take the decision about how efficiently and actively their employees and their workforce is doing while working remote. Um, uh, so this is what I wanted to talk, to talk about. It, it has to aspect the security and the productivity, but I think the two are linked together actually. Thanks for that, Osam. I think you, you articulated your point very well and, and, and sort of documented the sophistication of, of those threats and, and how you can protect the network. So thanks, thanks for your input, really, really enjoyed it, very informative. I'm going to move on now to Anis, who is the Director and Deputy CEO of Proven Consult. Um, Proven Consult obviously are known for driving digital transformation, and we've seen a huge acceleration in digital transformation, especially in the Middle East, um, in the last couple of months, especially since lockdown. So I just want to ask for your perspective, Anis, on that spike in digital uh, transformation and how you've helped companies uh, who maybe weren't equipped to deal with the crisis of COVID-19. Thank you, Mark, for the introduction. And uh, we are in Proven Consult, actually. We uh, much more uh, focus in the business continuity and for the enterprise. And as you know, most of the most important part for the business is the processes and the data. And then this is what we are uh, more concentrating on. And uh, based on this one, we introduce the uh, a solution that based on the artificial intelligence that uh, uh, can be combined between the business process, uh, business process and data. In the business process, we introduce the robotic process automation or the intelligent process automation, which is a combination of, uh, of uh, RBA and artificial intelligence functions like machine learning, deep learning, computer vision, and uh, the data analytics uh, and the data analytics transformation. Uh, so all the smart, all the solution we are providing depends on this one. Beside, uh, we uh, promote uh, the, especially after the COVID-19, uh, start to promote the humanoid robots that uh, can uh, do some of the work that cannot be done or there is a restriction for the human to be interaction. Also, beside that, uh, we introduced the conversational AI, uh, conversion analytics or conversational chatbot uh, with the voice bot. These are most of the solution we, we uh, concentrate on to keep the business continuity and to help in, in working remotely. Uh, you know, uh, working remotely will be disconnected from the office and uh, uh, some of the people will be not able to access uh, the, 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 their uh, infrastructure. So this is, will be much help in, in, in keeping the business continuity for most of the enterprise. Uh, AI actually become the, the driver for the business nowadays and especially after the COVID, AI and the smart solution will be, uh, uh, most of the companies will be uh, concentrating in, moving also to the cloud and to the software as a service will be also uh, uh, yani one of the things that the company will be moving fast to these, uh, to these areas. Collaboration, collaboration and customer uh, experience also the, the, where the technology is moving to, to uh, promote solution to help in the collaboration and customer experience. Yes. Thanks for that, Anas. Uh, another, another very comprehensive overview of what you guys are doing in terms of responding to the COVID-19 crisis. So appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to move on now to Samir, uh, Sales Director Middle East at Avanti. So, I mean, obviously, Avanti are known for their for their service desk solutions. We've already talked about talked about that transition to remote working. We've talked about the security aspect. Do you want to talk about the role Avanti have played in terms of assisting customers? And, and can you tell us a little bit more about that? 
Sure, thank you, Mark, and uh, good afternoon for everyone. Uh, first, let us look at the bright side, okay? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the situation before moving into what we have helped with. So from, uh, uh, let's say, economically perspective, yes, it is worse, but when it comes to technological wise, it's, it's really good because for the organizations that have invested for the past 10 years in UAE, in infrastructure and application systems, they were truly digitally enabled. So what, what do we really mean in this? Because what happened is that there are a lot of business survived the COVID lockdown and they were able to work from home or from any other places. Definitely with some glitches here and there and with some obstacles. Yes, this is, this is something well known. But look at the Look at the technology part, like earlier, before the COVID, they utilized, let's say, 10%. Look at the educational sector. Look at the government sector, or whoever is also uh, uh, meant in that COVID. So they utilized 10%, but during the lockdown, they were at 100%. This proves that, yes, we are digitally enabled in most of the organizations who spent. Now, what we really want to think about it, whether from Ivanti or any other perspective, is how we make that organization's intelligent enterprises. Because when we make them intelligent enterprises, it means that we are focusing on the data that they have. So it has to be driven by data, by visibility. It has to have the right technology, which is powering this data. And at the same time, a mix of hybrid between cloud and infrastructure, let's say physical infrastructure that can expedite any deliverables to the market. So look at the enterprise, let's say what they really want nowadays after the COVID or during the COVID or whatever is not anymore going back to the IT complex solutions that might take for three years, let's say to be implemented. What they are really looking at is is exactly similar to the Ivanti strategy that we are setting, especially on the 21st, 21st of July, is going with intelligent enterprises that provide self-secure, self-heal, self-manage, self-service. And this is what we really need. That goes within four weeks' time that my users are up and running because this is your assets. And if you look at the challenges that we were facing during that lockdown is that those users were not fully enabled. And the second important thing is that those users were accessing through their home network, through their routers, wireless modems, whatever, and they were using their own devices. And the passwords that they used to have was one, two, three, four. So look at our colleagues in Fortinet and everyone, that's where the job would come like managing these things. Our job, for example, would come in discovering these assets, assuring that there's a self-service behind it, assuring that there's a self-secure behind it, assuring that if anything goes wrong, self-heal will be available for that. So if you, if you look at all of these challenges, this is where we focus on the intelligent enterprises because it, if, if we're gonna continue with COVID or if anything happens similar to COVID again, uh, gentlemen and ladies, like ladies and gentlemen, the, the hackers were born at home. They, their workplace is at home, but for users, it's not their home. So this is, this is affecting big time, the business community and, and everything else goes with that. Uh, that's, that's very quickly from my side, thank you. Samir, that's brilliant. Really appreciate that. And again, like the, like the guys before you, it was very comprehensive. And I'd love to follow up with you and ask you about more. But unfortunately, the compounds of this panel discussion don't, don't allow for that. So I'm going to move on to James Harvey now. James, thanks for your patience. Uh, and I know we've got Rajesh as well there to speak to. But I spoke to a colleague of yours a couple of uh, weeks ago at AppDynamics. You guys are responsible for, for fueling our digital experiences with some of our favorite apps. Uh, as Samir touched on and, and some of the other guys, business continuity for the companies you work with is key. If, some, if I have a bad experience with an app, you know, we, we, we don't have much patience for that. So how have you helped uh, companies 
you know, leverage their technology to ensure that they keep that seamless experience for their customers? Because I'm sure it must have been a challenge. Yeah, no, thank you, Mark. Um, I, I think it's been, um, you know, really key to find out what our customers um, are doing with those applications. And for me, having been a, a past customer, it's about understanding the business outcome that that application provides. And obviously with the technologies that um, we deliver to customers, we enable them to get the visibility into their entire estate. So, so we can actually uh, assure that they have that um, seamless digital experience. We will actually identify um, uh, items of uh, code or, particular other items within the stack that can go wrong before the business impact um, uh, happens. Therefore, making sure that their end customer, taking that outside in approach um, to IT, their end customer doesn't have um, the bad digital experience that uh, unfortunately so many um, do outside of our customer base. Thanks for that, James. Appreciate it, short, short and sharp, but concise and, and to the point. Uh, I'll move on now to, to Rajesh, um, who is the Vice President of Manage Engine. So last, but certainly not least, Rajesh, just want to speak to you about, you know, Manage Engine, your perspective on, on COVID-19. We've already touched on security, remote working, experiences, business continuity. So I'll let you uh, take it from whatever perspective and whatever angle uh, you see best fit for you. Of course, uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mark, for the opportunity. So from our perspective, uh, Manage Engine perspective, a lot of points, interesting points, useful points have been covered, but personally from, from, from my side, one, one unmissable trend that we have seen in the last three, four months, right? So almost all businesses today, we can safely say are digital enabled, but the, the, the assumption also was you had an IT team or the technology organization that was running the technology operations, but it was typically considered to operate from the back end, right? So they were typically a back end team. And what this pandemic has done is like overnight, literally bring them to the front lines, right? So that is the trend that we have really, really seen. And if you see in the last three months, the, the companies that have really done well, are companies that had a really uh, uh, capable uh, technology organizations that enabled secure remote work for all their employees, right? That has been a, a, a distinguishing capability for many companies' survival today and their ability to compete and build uh, a leadership, right? So that's the first trend. And it's not going to just stop with this responsibility of just enabling remote work. It just started. They've just scratched the surface being on the front line and there is a lot more to come. And that is exactly the trend that we see from our perspective at Manage Engine. So to do our bit, we, we sort of uh, uh, put together some tools bundle to, to sort of uh, 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 help all these organizations to enable remote access pretty quickly. So no questions asked, no licensing fee. They just go to the cloud or download software that could quickly enable remote access. But even from our perspective, we see a lot of gaps that need to be addressed going forward because we all agree that the normal is not going to be the same anymore, right? So a lot of things are going to change. Few things could go back to how they were. And, 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 and our friends here, Samir and, and Osama touched upon these points. The first thing I also agree with Samir that one of the key things that will actually differentiate companies that would do well post pandemic would be how they enable this self help for these companies. Because another trend that we see is like uh, most big companies, I live and operate out of India. Even here, the trend is most companies are thinking of like doing away with this one large office. And the other extreme of also allowing people to like forever work from home is also not practical, right? So the trade off is companies are trying to set up these small satellite offices where five to 10 to maximum 15 people could work together so that you, you, you have a best of both worlds of both physical and social distancing. And that is a trend that would continue. But what it does for the technology teams is suddenly your, your, your network layer in your stack, in your technology stack is all over the place, right? So you got to secure that. And that's where Osama's points become uh, very, very important. You have to rethink your, your 
access to information. The model and the governance of access to information has to be relooked at, and also uh, uh, have a relook at your trust model. Uh, uh, think about something like adopting the zero trust model, and more importantly, like what the other important point that was touched upon, build a super smart infrastructure where you have self-help, self-secure, and self-healing capabilities. And that's exactly how we also see uh, uh, the trend that is playing out and the, the times to come. Thank you for the opportunity, Bob. I just want to thank you all on behalf of CPI Media Group for your time. I know you're extremely busy and speaking to a journalist isn't uh, everyone's favorite hobby. So I appreciate uh, you speaking to me today and, uh, and us at, at CPI. So thanks a million for your time, guys. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll all catch up soon face to face. Really fantastic uh, session there, uh, moderated by Mark Forker and some of the leading IT decision makers here in the Middle East. Well done once again. We move on now to our next five. Hadi Anwar, G42. Hussein Mohammed El Mahedi, the University of Sharjah. Jalil B. Rahiman from Prime Healthcare Group. Dr. Jasim Haji from the Artificial Intelligence Society in Bahrain. And Jayesh Magalnal from Majid Al Fatain Properties. And our next five winners are Kalfan Mata Al Hassani, Monitoring and Control Center. Khaled Nasser Abdul Rakaz Al Razuki from Dubai Police. Mata Suhel Salam Al Meheri from Diwa. Mohammed Hamid Abdul Hamid from the Ceramica Platino Group. And Mohammed Al Maini from the Abu Dhabi Motorsports Management. And well done once again for that last set of transformational leaders for 2020. We're now going to take a look at a video from one of the world's leading ICT solution vendors and our gold sponsor for today, Huawei.
much to Huawei there. And now last, but by no means least, we move on now to our final 10 Transformational Leader Awards. Mubarak Hussain from Bloom Holding. Nithin Geo Thomas, Amity Education Middle East. Sabir VK from Coppola. Samir Abi Frem from the Rotana Group of Hotels and Resorts. And Sharoom Khan from the Emirates College of Technology, Abu Dhabi. Shanawaz Kakot Kalari from Enhanced Group. Warren Price, Dubai Petroleum. Wissam Messara from Mazrui International. Yuri Miznik, First Abu Dhabi Bank. Mohamed Sleek, Aramex. And our final winner is Haytham Al Kheri, Al Raji Bank. Very well done indeed to each and every one of our winners for 2020. Now, ladies and gentlemen, sadly, that brings us to the end of the Tahawaltech.com Transformational Leadership Awards for 2020. On behalf of Tahawaltech and the CPI Media Group, I'd like to congratulate all of our winners here today and also extend a huge thank you to, of course, to our gold sponsors, Fortinet and Huawei. And thank you all to each and every one of you for tuning in as well. Thank you very much.